everyone, how are you? It's Casey. I'm super excited to be here with you today, um, making finally a new tutorial video. Um, first, I wanted to share with you my newest Biggers doll. I finished him last night and absolutely love him. He's not listed yet, but he will be hopefully this week. We'll see, it's spring break this week and we are getting ready to go out of town um, for a little while. So not sure when he'll be in my shop, but very, very soon because I just adore him. And so I wanted to share something that I changed about the way I did this one. And then I wanted to try out, as I mentioned in past videos, carving on one of these Bigger's heads. Um, I have in the works, let me, I wasn't gonna show these, but I might as well. I have in the works several other Bigger's dolls that are, one is definitely done with painting. Here she is, her bangs are kind of crazy. And the other two I'm kind of playing with. I'm not sure if I'm done painting them yet. I'm not, I'm, I'm kind of, my process is usually that I um, paint the doll, play around with eyes, play around with hair, till I feel confident in the way that they look. So I'm not sure yet on a couple of those. And, but they should be done in the next couple weeks either way. But he is done, and I'm really excited about him. Um, so the first thing I wanna share is, you'll recall from my previous videos about the Biggers dolls, the way that I constructed the neck and head portion of the doll was by cutting off um, the original neck part of the Biggers dolls and using my steel joints to attach to the body. Um, unfortunately, due to the conflict right now in Russia and Ukraine, um, the supplier that I purchased the steel neck joints from is unable to um, send me any. And I they're pretty expensive to use for these dolls anyway, so I wanted to experiment with an alternative, at least for the biggers, because those steel joints are really for um, Blythe dolls and for head mobility on a Blythe doll, and the Biggers dolls don't need that. They just need to hold it on. <laughs> so I went to the hardware store and bought a whole bunch of different screws and, um, what are these things called? These are nut lock nuts. So I bought a whole bunch of different sizes of screws and lock nuts to see what would work. And it turns out, um, I, I'm sure there are versions that will work just as well, but the ones that I found work is this size screw, which is this one, and this size lock nut, which is this one. And the reason it's kind of important is you don't want a super long screw because the screw is going to go into the body. And if you have a really long or large screw, you have um, the potential of poking out as well as needing to go too far. And you don't really need to go very far. You just need to hold it in. So what I did with this doll, I did the same procedure. I cut off this part, this, little top part of the the body and then I um, did it just like like I did before with the other dolls I just didn't as I said use one of those steel joints I just used this is usually open right here let me poke that So all I did was put the screw through there, put that through there, and then into the body. Once it's on, I insert it in the head just like before and glue it into place. 
So it worked just as good and it's much cheaper and more accessible than those steel joints. So if I just wanted to share that really quickly in case you are working on bigger dolls or wanna work on bigger dolls um, and the steel joints are hard to find right now, that is the alternative and it worked just as well. As, in fact, maybe even better. Um, it took me less time to get this one attached. So I really like that. So just wanted to share that before we get started. So now with this doll that's shedding all over the place, I am halfway through the prep on him. I still need to remove the face paint and the hair, which I'm going to do before we get started. And then we're going to use the Dremel tool to try to make an open mouth. So if you remember in the previous videos, there's really only a couple molds of the bigger dolls. There's only a couple mouth options, which isn't super fun, but this type of material is not the same as a Blythe doll. You can't carve it by sanding or using knives. Um, but I have seen some customizers successfully be able to modify this type of vinyl not on the Biggers dolls, but I've seen it, well, maybe I did see it on one Biggers, I can't remember, but I know I've seen it on Paola Reina dolls, which is a similar um, material. So I'm hoping it's gonna work and we don't ruin the doll. My plan is that we'll go slow and sort of open the mouth and just have the mouth a little bit open. I'm not gonna try to remove the entire mouth and reconstruct it. I just kinda wanna uh, make a hole in there and leave the, the lips around it. So we'll see how it goes, but for now I'm gonna prep the doll so that we can do that. All right, so I've removed the paint and the hair. I've got a few hairs I'll have to work on a little bit more, but I wanted to try to get started on this before we lose the light and I have to be done for the day. So we're gonna give this a shot and see what it's like. I'm going to use my Dremel tool. I'm going to use this one um, because it's skinny and hopefully it can kind of get in there. And as I said, my plan is to just sort of make a hole here. The plastic is not very thick or the vinyl or whatever it is. So it shouldn't be hard to get through. The problem with this type of material is just making sure that you can keep it smooth um, because sandpaper doesn't work very well on it. Uh, but we're gonna give it a shot and see. The other option would be to open these nose holes as well. So I, I kinda just wanna use this one as an experiment and hopefully it'll still turn out and it won't be ruined. So let's give it a try. I won't be able to talk while the Dremel's going. So I just wanted to give you kind of a game plan of opening this area right here and we'll see how that goes. So that already went faster and smoother than I expected. Um, you can see it's open. I wanna make it a little bit more so that we can maybe show some teeth or at least just be able to tell that it's open. So let's do a little more. So my game plan is to try to get the hole basically how I want it and then fine tune it. But again, you can see how um, it doesn't sand easily. So you kind of have to push hard and then it can make these dents that are hard to get smooth. So um, I'm gonna do my best to get it as smooth as possible with the Dremel and then we may have to go in and see if sandpaper or something else might work to smooth it out. I'm looking through my tools here, my drill bits to see what might work. 
and I'm not sure because the hole is not very large, so I'm not sure what will fit in there. I think maybe this one or this one, but it doesn't even fit. So we'll keep going with this one for now until it's how we want it, which it's almost there, and then we're gonna try some sandpaper. So I really like the shape of the top lip, but the bottom lip is hard. So I think we're gonna try some thick sandpaper. This is 220 grit sandpaper, and I'm going to cut it into a strip. that we can put inside there. And then I hold it on the inside and hold it on the outside and go back and forth. And let's see if this will smooth out that lip. So with this material, we might need even a stronger grit because I don't know that this is doing anything. It's hard to tell. It doesn't look bad. So that seems to be working to smooth it out. So like Blythe, it's probably just gonna take some time to get it exactly right. The only thing I'm not sure is I'm getting a little bit of sanding here on the cheek and I'm not sure if that will sand off with a different grit or if it's going to damage it. So all of this is very experimental at this point. So I think like Blythe, it's not going to be super fast, but it is faster. Um, I'm gonna work on smoothing this out more and you can see with my file tool, there's a little piece in there that's cut and I can't seem to file it off. So um, I'm gonna use some of the same tools that I use on my Blythe, just trying to be extra careful with uh, this material being so different. It's not as forgiving. but it's looking really good. So I'm gonna do a little more work on it um, and then we'll look at the finished product. 
Hi everyone, welcome back. It's been a quite a while since I started this video, but I'm ready to continue working on the doll. So I did successfully open the mouth and sand it um, pretty good. I'm really, really thrilled with how it turned out. And then when I got ready to start working on it today, I decided to try dimples. Um, and I'm not sure if they're, I, I like the way they look so far, but what I discovered with sanding directly on is, and I don't know if you can see, because they're really tiny, but it started making tiny little holes in the material. And I didn't get that around the mouth, but really with the mouth, I was just sanding it smooth and here I'm digging sort of in. Um, so I didn't want to keep going because I didn't know if it was going to ruin it. So my hope is that when I spray on the layers of Mr. Super Clear, the Mr. Super Clear can sort of fix some blemishes if they're not huge. And so I'm hoping that it'll fill in and smooth out some of that and those little holes won't be visible. So we'll see. This doll is definitely a practice doll, but you know, as with everything, you don't want to have to end up trashing a doll. So, um, I just washed it and so I'm going to give it a little bit more time to dry and then, um, spray it with Mr. Super Clear and we'll begin painting and we'll see how it turns out. I am going to make teeth for inside of there. So we'll have to do that process as well, but I'm going to start with the painting. So probably won't talk through most of that. I'll just sort of record the face up um, and we'll see how the dimples go and we'll see how the mouth goes when we get to that point.
so excited we get to finally put this guy together. You can see how his teeth came out, love them. Um, and so I'm gonna show you how I am now putting the bodies together without using that steel joint for Blythe because I still can't get any more right now. And they're a little expensive to use for this when you don't really need it. So let's put him together. The first thing is cutting off a little bit of the neck. So this part can go, and then I found that I like to cut about right here, otherwise the neck looks too long, um, and they look like a giraffe. So this is about the spot. It doesn't have to be perfect. I sometimes use my Dremel for this, but have found that the Dremel doesn't always work. Pretty easy so that's the first part and then the second part is taking the neck piece from the head um, the original piece and it's usually soft enough to trim with scissors or you can use again your exacto knife it's kind of late in the afternoon so I apologize let me see if I can fix this light I don't know if that's dark, but I hope that's not too dark. We are having the weirdest weather in Oregon. It's been a very, very cold spring. Um, very cold spring. And so we've had a lot of really cloudy days. Today's kind of sunny and cloudy. So anyway, so you gotta cut that piece off about that much. And then we have to use our Dremel to enlarge this hole. So that takes a minute. So we'll do that. Um, I won't talk while we're doing that. So you want to enlarge it enough to fit the body in the body neck inside there. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to um, go in there a little bit. So let's do that. I use this bit just to sand it away. I do my best to try to make it look nice, which is not always easy. Um, but once you put it on, you can't really tell if it's bumpy a little bit. So that looks pretty good. I'm gonna try to even out, oops, some of the bumpy spots. Okay. So once it once it fits on, it doesn't have to necessarily fit on. It just has to make sh you just have to make sure that there is enough space for the body or the neck to go hidden inside there, which it looks pretty good. Then you're gonna need your little screw and um, this guy. And what I like to do is get it started, the screw spot started in the body first. So I poke a hole, otherwise it's hard to get the screw to go in. You also can start the screw a little bit with the screwdriver. Now I've said this in previous videos that you have to be really careful which angle, the angle that you start the screw in the body because if you angle it too far to one direction, it could come out the body and ruin the, the neck. So you wanna make sure that it's going straight down in there. And that's why using a really long screw can be dangerous because you have more of a chance of it popping out. So as long as it looks like it's going straight down, it should be okay. So then take it off and then put it through the washer. Is that called a washer? And then goes through there and now this is the part that will screw in. So 
So you gotta kind of give it a start. And basically you're just screwing it on until it's pretty tight and this does not pop up and have a big gap. So it might come up a little bit, but as long as it's mostly covered, it will look good once it's on. Okay, so now if it's hard to get in there, you might wanna trim this a little bit more. It doesn't need to be that big. Just enough to glue it inside. So there. So that's how we're gonna glue it. And then as you can see, you don't really see it unless you hold um, the doll up like that. So, my super glue, I don't have good super glue right now. And normally, as you know, I'm completely against super glue. But for this, it's kind of um, helpful because it stays in place stronger. And my super glue is all messed up right now, so I'm using this little thing with a stick. But if you have super glue that you can squirt in there, normally I kind of hold it in place and then squirt the glue from the top of the head. Um, but because mine's all messed up right now, I'm going to put some just around in there and then stick the head in. I did this previously with another one and it worked okay. You just have to be really careful with super glue that you don't get it anywhere else on the doll um, because it causes a lot of problems. So I'm just gonna smear it around here on the inside. It's causing all these little strings. I don't know what's up with it. But that should be good. And then go ahead and put this in here and push it up and then let it sit for a decent amount of time to make sure that glue sets and you know hold it all up and make sure it's where you want it because once it sets you are stuck with it so let's let the glue set and then we'll come back and we'll put the back of his head on and his wig and he will finally be done now that it's dried it should be pretty solid. You can sometimes turn the body a little bit, but overall I haven't found a good way to construct these so that they can do too much moving of their head, but it shouldn't come off. Isn't he the cutest? I am really happy with him. So now, now I glue it back on the headpiece, and I still use the super glue for that. What we're gonna do, and again, most of the time I use, don't use super glue, but for these dolls, I do mainly because I want um, to finish them up. And at least for this head piece, uh, if you do have to take it apart, you should be able to, I've, I've been able to. And you don't need it to be, um, it just needs to stay on, so it doesn't have to be perfectly done. Just be careful with your super glue because mine, for some reason, is making all these little strings and you don't wanna get it on their face. So I'm just gonna smear some around. Just make sure before you do glue it on that um, you are done putting the body on because if you have to take it off, it can be a little bit hard if you've used super glue. Oh, and then I get it all over the place. So it should dry pretty quickly. You might have to wait 
a few minutes. I kind of just make sure that it is held in place. It doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to cover it with a wig. Now this wig I got on Etsy from a seller I really like in China. Um, they took quite a while to get here. I have a couple of them, but I've not used this style. I think she makes it out of like faux fur, which is great. Um, and normally with wigs, I don't like to glue them on, but I'm considering that I'm gonna glue this one on because I've been playing with it. And I think to make sure it stays in place, and has the coverage I want on his head, I'm going to need to glue it. And I'm not going to use super glue for that. I'm hoping to try to use a milder glue, um, but we'll see. The wig just doesn't have, it does have full coverage, but you can see that you can see some of his holes and that's what I want to make sure stays covered as well as this wig does not have an elastic band. So it does stay on pretty well, but I want it to make sure that it stays really well covering those holes and that it doesn't shift. So I was going to try some fabric glue because I really like it, um, but I don't know if it will stick very well to the vinyl. So we're going to try it and we'll see how it does. I've got the wig where I want it. I'm not going to glue it too much. I just want it to stay. I also like this glue because it dries really fast. Um, similar to super glue, but just fast. So let's see if it works. We'll try a little bit and we'll let it dry. And then if it works, he will be done. So I'm really excited about how he came out. I'm gonna try to do some photos here before we lose the light. And right now I'm getting ready to go up to the Pacific Northwest BJD Expo. It's next weekend. So all the dolls I have right now are going to be going up there, including this guy. So if anyone comes back and isn't adopted, then they will be back in the shop when I return. So if you're interested in him, keep an eye out. Um, otherwise, come to the expo if you can. Would love to see you. Super excited to have an in-person event here again and get back to community and sharing dolls. So thanks as always for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video that I've made now over months. I don't even know when I started this video, so hopefully it's cohesive. I have to go back tonight and, and put it all together. So thanks as always for watching, and we'll see you all again soon. I hope you're well. Bye, everyone.